The Animal Justice Party won a seat in the New South Wales Upper House. They also want to give contraception to kangaroos. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I am going to need it. Because the results for the New South Wales Legislative Assembly, the Upper House in New South Wales at the state level, has been declared. Now, Mr. Leinhelm from the LDP, who declared that he'd won a seat very early in the counting, didn't actually win one, which is a shame. He's quite a good advocate for sensible thinking. Okay, he can come across as a bit gruff, shall we say. But he's definitely an advocate for men's rights too. But who do we get? Who do we get? Rod Roberts, so Pauline Hanson's One Nation. They've got two people in the upper house, which is good. Fantastic. I think they'd be very happy with that result, particularly with Latham coming in there. But then number 20 was from the Animal Justice Party. The Animal Justice Party, Emma Hurst. And let's have a look at an article sharing a bit more about Emma and what, what her plans are for Australia and for the industry. And I think the LDP needs to have a look. The Libertarians need to have a big, hard look at how they could lose to a party like this. Because remember, people, you need to vote to shift the window. Now, a lot of people voted for the shooters and fishers in the shooters, fishers and farmers. Sorry, in the lower house. Uh, I mean, the Greens got Greens got two. One Nation got two. The Nationals got four, and then it's Labor and Liberal for the rest. So let's have a look. Let's learn a bit more about Emma. So this is from the Daily Telegraph. Newly elected Emma Hurst reveals bold plans for dairy industry. Vegan bodybuilder and newly elected New South Wales Upper House member Emma Hertz wants to reduce the kangaroo population with contraceptives, slowly transition the dairy industry into plant-based farming, and eventually phase out the production of eggs in Australia. Okay. Yes. Well, that says it all. Contraceptives for kangaroos. So instead of flying around and culling their numbers, you're going to fly around and, and shoot contraceptives at them and hope it works. How do you know you're going to not shoot the same one too often and cause irreparable damage? I, I, I don't understand. Let, let's keep going. The Animal Justice Party member will join her Legislative Council colleague, Mark Pearson, on the cro- crossbench for an eight-year term and says animal rights will be their major focus their major focus, preventing puppy farming, stopping kangaroo culling, banning caged chickens, improving quality of life for dairy cows, and stopping deforestation to assist koalas are her immediate priorities. Now, all these things sound good. They all sound nice and friendly and good. Puppy farming. You know, I'm puppy farming. I would argue, yes, there there probably are some issues in that industry that can be addressed. Kangaroo culling, well, what's the alternative? Contraception or you let them starve to death? Either a peaceful bullet or starvation or a wasteful scheme that I guarantee you won't work. Caged chickens, that will increase the cost of egg production. As much as you are unhappy with it, your ideological, you're trying to force your ideological position onto other people, and that will decrease the quality of life for some people. They won't be able to afford as many eggs. They won't be able to eat as much. It's that simple. All of these things, all of them, will increase your costs one way or another. None of this is free. Just remember that. Improving the quality of life for dairy cows. Okay, now, here in Queensland, they recently had a petition in Parliament to try and get mandatory shade structures for dairy cows here in Queensland. And you can just imagine the increased cost that that would put into the industry that's already struggling to make ends meet. Stopping deforestation to assist koalas. Now, everyone loves koalas. We've got a fantastic koala sanctuary right near where I live that I visit with the children at least twice a year. But let's have a look at a map of Australia and let's look at how much native forest we have. It's all of the dark green here. You can see here, the light green is native grasslands, this uh, beige color, beige pink color, native shrublands. So you can see the built up areas in red, which are these small areas here. 
And then, you know, you've got all bare in the middle of Australia. Uh, annual crops and highly modified, which is the orange. But look how much of the green we still have. Okay? Look how much is still present. It is not like we're bulldozing half the bloody country. This has taken hundreds of years to happen. And we're managing our forestry products. We're managing them. It's not as dire as people are making out. So, more news. Let's, let's keep going here. Ms. Hurst said the culling of kangaroos for commercial, population, and farming reasons should be stopped and suggested contraceptives as a more humane method for population control. Okay, here is the fundamental issue with their entire political position. They're treating animals as humans. Animals are not humans. Animals are not going to take care of you like a human would. Sure, you may have a dog that likes you. A dolphin may swim and, and guide you to shore. But they are not humans. Not at all. Non-lethal solutions such as amino, immunocontraceptives, darting, essentially desexing these kangaroos to reduce population numbers, she told the Daily Telegraph. Okay, so why is this the lesser of two evils? You know, why are you interfering in the kangaroos? Why are you taking their right to reproduce away from them? How's that different from eating them? Kangaroo, you know, if you cook it right, which I haven't, I buggered it up, it can taste really good, but I've had it at a restaurant, it's fantastic. There's been a lot of research into these methods and it suggests that they could be more effective. It, it's more costly up front. Well, there you go. But over a long term period, it would actually reduce costs. You know what you need to do? Just encourage people to farm it and hunt it to sell. Over. We need to get an overseas market for kangaroo meat. That's what we need to do and export frozen kangaroo meat. But no, that's uh, contrary to their, their position. Ms. Hurst said her party would push to introduce tough anti-puppy farming legislation and was focused on stopping the caging of chickens who laid, lay eggs. The first step is to get hens out of cages. It's just a hideous practice. But I think there will be a reduction in the consumption of eggs over time, just as people seem to have naturally changed their diet. Well, they're gonna, it's actually, I would disagree with that because more and more people are adopting a low-carb diet. More people are adopting a high-fat diet. Keto is becoming much more popular because people are actually experiencing the health benefits. Uh, they're having to they're able to get off their insulin, which they can't on any vegan diet unless it's also a keto one. And often that will result in additional egg consumptions. We eat a lot of eggs. Ms. Hurst said there were too many dairy farmers in Australia and said the ones struggling to make ends meet would be better off exiting the sector. Well, there you go. That's that's beautiful. Hopefully, there's something we can work to in regards to a dairy exit scheme to support farmers and help them transition into plant-based forms of farming, she said. The dairy industry is a very difficult one. Obviously, with the treatment of the calves, the constant impregnation of mother dairy cows, it's continually cruelty, so we need to find a solution. Oh, boy. Miss Hertz, who has been a vegan for 19 years. 19 years. Wow. She's probably one of these ones that are thin on the inside, but horrific on the inside. Or thin on the outside and horrific on the inside. I hate to see how much vegetable oil she's eating. She said she supported the recent vegan protests in Melbourne, which were conducted peacefully, but she said does not support any illegal behavior like the invasion of farms by activists. She also supported the recent climate change protests by school children around the world who took the day off to make their views known. This is their plan, planet longer than it is for ours. So it's really essential for them to be able to have a voice in this. They're too young to understand the implications of what they're talking about. Okay, they are only parroting one view. And I've seen this. I've seen this myself at university. When I was teaching ethics to master students at QUT in architecture, we had a whole bunch of lecturers who were pushing a particular green ideological agenda. They were hard pushing it. And I would always counter argue with the students going, no, don't just, don't just parrot what they're saying because I don't agree with everything these lecturers are saying. You need to dig deep and challenge their positions. But the lecturer said this. We'll go, yes, well, look, here, here's an example. This is where this is wrong. This is where this is wrong. Oh, look at this United Nations one. Oh, look at this book by Lomborg. Oh, what if you develop, devoted these resources to this? You'd have a better outcome. 
oh, what instead of putting solar panels on your project, you looked at this other energy option? Nope. They just wanted to parrot the same crap just to get through the subject because it was a very, very difficult subject. It was really, really hard because the premise of it was to get you to challenge your way of thinking, to challenge, um, to analyze the earth on a systems level. And, and they, are, they were all socialists. But it, it, if anything, it hardened me even more to laissez-faire economics. It really did going through this process because I remember I would actually argue while everyone else was doing vertical green farms in Brisbane, I would argue for a um, shopping center or a nuclear power plant. I could justify them using the system, the arguments I developed. I still got a seven on the subject. But my point is going off on that story is that at a university level these students didn't have the critical thinking skills to challenge what was put in front of them they just accepted it so do you think do you think miss hurst do you think these students here at this level at high school level have that ability i would argue they don't i would argue they do not i would argue they're simply following along with their teachers they're doing what they're told and they're getting a day off i mean who doesn't want a day off let's keep going she entered four bodybuilding competitions last year in the bikini category and uh, said her career as an amateur bodybuilder was now being placed on hold to focus on the Legislative Council. I'm still aiming to keep a very active and healthy lifestyle, but the time needed for something like that, bodybuilding, is qu uh, quite a big dedication and my main focus now is the animals. No, your main focus now should be you're representing the people who voted you onto the Legislative Council. No animals voted for you. Not one. Okay, so everyone who voted for this lady, realize she's not putting your you first. She's putting the animals first. Do Am I the only one that gets the feeling people preference this party just because they've, you know, maybe a bit of guilt? Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Maybe a donkey vote, perhaps? I, I don't know. I do not know. Bodybuilding was a really good experience. It involved working out twice a day and weighing and measuring all of your food and having a very structured food plan. So I probably won't have time to do it again, unfortunately. Well, that makes sense. I mean, good on her for, for going through that, you know, regardless of the method that you do, that requires commitment and that shows dedication. But, wow, what is going on in New South Wales? You've got someone who wants to represent animals more than wants to actually represent the people guys let me know what you think are you going to vote for the animal justice party next time do you think eggs should be banned from australia what about contraceptions for kangaroos please like share subscribe ding the bell to see my daily updates and i'll see you all again later bye for now